Hello hockey fans and welcome to a little bonus video on the channel this week. Obviously I would usually be making a story video and uploading that for you guys on a Thursday and then at the weekend getting ready to upload another hockey related video. However, I'm doing a little bonus video today on the Thursday because I've been very busy with three different live streams this week. I've done one or two already and I've got one more to go this week. Obviously round one of the NHL entry draft I did on Tuesday slash Wednesday morning. Got the NHL 21 be a pro live stream going out. I think it should be finished just before this video goes out if I manage to get everything out on time and then tomorrow on Friday October 9th I've got my free agency live stream so do feel free to check into that if you guys are interested however in today's video we are looking at these bad boys yes we are the blindside classic trading cards now I've done a couple of pack openings for blindside trading cards before for those of you that aren't aware of who blindside are they are a UK based hockey card company they've been specializing in doing elite ice hockey league cards and uh cards and sets related to british players or or players that have been fan favorites across here in the united kingdom so as a uk hockey fan i really like the stuff they do they very kindly sent me these packs for free so a big thank you to them um there's 160 cards to collect in this classic trading card set and as far as what they've told me it's all to do with vintage players sort of historical players for historical teams throughout british hockey history which as a hockey history fa fanatic essentially i love that i'm all for it so let's just move these to the side and we'll take a look at what it says on the top here so if my camera can just uh no it's not going to do it okay so i'll read it from here it says 160 cards make up the first series of blindside classic trading cards featuring players from over 25 uk teams obviously there aren't that many teams in the uk so um, especially at, at this moment in time in the Elite League. So it's obviously historical teams as well. I'm really hoping to pull a Tony Hand card here, folks. I really want one of them. Um, the collection includes 10 Uncommon Shiny uh, ten uncommon shiny All-Star cards to look out for, uh, some of which have been signed by players themselves, making them even more rare and collectible. So once again, Blind, uh, Blindside managed to get a couple of uh, signature cards in there. Oh, I really hope I get a signature card. There's just something about getting a card with a player's signature on. It just makes that extra bit special, doesn't it? Um, the collection also includes four checklist cards, so keep track of all of your wants and needs. Then they've got all their social media on there. I'll just place it down here. It should be able to um, show it quite well. Uh, it's usually BS trading cards, blindside trading cards. Right, I've got four of these packs to open. I'm just going to get on with it, folks. I'm just going to open this pack up because I want to see what we've got. I want to see what nice cards we've got. It's six cards in a pack as far as I'm aware, so let's see who we get to begin with. So we start off with Rob Stewart of the Romford Raiders. Let's have a look at what he has sailed. Move these cards down here. We'll take a look at them each first. Canadian defenseman Stewart spent 16 full seasons playing in the UK. He scored 520 points in 245 games with the Raiders. He played with the Telford, uh, the Telford Tigers, moved to the Bracknell Bees. He won some championships. Um, but yeah, not a bad card. I, I like the black and white finish on it. Very nice. I'm just going to move that out of the way there. Very nice finish there. I know a couple of the other like UK hockey nuts um, managed to find other... Uh, th they used a lot of the UK sort of hockey scene to find the, the information and the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The pictures of these guys. So I really like that. Okay, Rob Stewart's number one. We'll just place him there so we can see him still. Next up, we have Rob Dobson. Dobson. So we've got two Robs to start off this pack opening. He was with the Scottish Eagles. Um, a team that is no longer around, obviously, uh, in the UK hockey leagues. A Canadian netminder, Dobson, spent two seasons in the UK, the first in 1997-98, and he was a large part of them winning the Grand Slam of Autumn Cup, Challenge Cup, Super League, and Playoff Championship. He returned then several years later in 03-04 with the Sheffield Steelers with, for the inaugural Elite Ice Hockey League season, so that's pretty cool. And his average stats over time, 2.35 goals against average, 0 0.920 save percentage in 45 games for the Eagles. Not a bad showing. First one in colour, very nice. Next up, we have an all-star card. Ooh, Terry G Curtinback. Get, is that right, Terry Curtinback? I like the shiny, like, all-star on the front. I should actually show it on the camera, shouldn't I? That'd be great. Uh, let's have a flick round of this. Uh, he came to England from Brandon University in Canada, joining the Nottingham Panthers as an import defenseman in 1986. He stayed with the Panthers for seven seasons, six as the captain, winning two Autumn Cups and a playoff championship while he was there. So he then joined Romford, and then he obviously joined the Guildford Flames, which is where he got that. I, I do like the very similar to the New York Rangers style there with the with the text going down in that diagonal line. I'm a sucker for that kind of design. I love it. I guess it's just me as a Rangers fan. Um, so yeah, there's the all-star card in the pack. We next have Rob Tremblay. We've got plenty of Robs in this pack today, don't we? It's all Robs all the time. Um, so he played for the Manchester Storm. 252 penalty minutes in 57 games. 
Forward Tremblay spent eight seasons in the UK, four in the Super League with the Newcastle Cobras, uh, the Newcastle River Kings, the Scottish Eagles, and the Manchester Storm. Then a further four seasons, <clears throat> excuse me, in the British National League with the Hull Thunder. <clears throat> I've got a cough today. The Edinburgh Capitals and the Newcastle Vipers. I got there eventually, folks. Don't worry about it. Um, he ma amassed a lot of penalty minutes during his time in the uh, British system. Uh, another Rob to add to the collection. So three out of four Robs so far. Don't worry, we don't have a Rob here, folks. This is Pierre-Claude Drouin, who played for the Nottingham Panthers. I love the fact that they're using all of the vintage logos, which is really nice. Um, so he played 138 games with the Nottingham Panthers, 143 points. So over a point per game, 216 penalty minutes. Not a bad production, if you ask me, folks. Uh, so he played four seasons in the Super League. The British Super League was the precursor to the Elite Ice Hockey League, by the way. Uh, two for the Bracknell Bees, and he also played two for the Nottingham Panthers. He was regarded as one of the most skillful forwards in the league at the time an integral part of both teams, and was voted into the Super League first All-Star team in the 2000-01 season. Then he returned to Nottingham all the way in 2007, so seven years after being named to the first All-Star team, he comes back, plays 16 games, scores 15 points. So, Pierre-Claude Drouin, well done, son. And then last in this, this first pack, we have uh, Moray Hansen, Moray Hansen, for the Vikings. I'm just going to check this off screen. I can't quite read what that team says, actually. I should know what this logo is, shouldn't I, as a hockey nut, but... Clearly, I don't. Ah, the Dumfries Border Vikings. So, it's another Scottish team then. So, Scottish netminder Hansen played 16 seasons in the UK between 1981 and 1997. He played in Murrayfield for 13 seasons, winning the British League twice and three Autumn Cups. He finished his career with two seasons at Dumfries Border Vikings before returning to become a referee. Interesting. So, former player becoming a referee. You love to see it. However, his goals against average and a save percentage isn't exactly ideal, is it, folks? Goals against average of 6.63. Could you imagine that in today's hockey? That would be absolutely terrible. <laughs> be quite funny, though. I'm not going to lie. So, that's the first pack done. So, those are our first cards. Let's move on to open up the second pack here so six cards in each pack that means we've got what six uh 12 18 24 uh cards to open so next one up we have jonathan weaver have a look at jonathan weaver shall we folks manchester storm jonathan weaver lifting the trophy as you would expect uh 16 penalty minutes and 77 games but 44 points so uh Jonathan Weaver, he was a good player for that team. Uh, was nothing short of a British hockey legend with his career spanning nearly 30 years, folks, from 1992 to the present day. He started his career as a forward before reverting to the defenceman with the Newcastle Vipers. He's played for several clubs throughout his long career, including Newcastle, Coventry, Nottingham, and Durham. In that time, he's won four league championships, two playoff championships, and one Challenge Cup. So Jonathan Weaver, well done, son. What a, what a long and illustrious career. Next up, we have Claude Dumas. Dumas, Dumas, I don't know, one or the other. A thousand points in 400 games with the Telford Tigers. That's a pretty impressive stint with a team. Whether it's the UK minor leagues or not, that's still bloody impressive, folks. Uh, forward Dumas spent 20 seasons in the UK, half of which was spent with Telford. But also included spells with the Whitley Warriors, the Cardiff Devils, and the Sheffield Steelers. His first spell, he was the club's top point scorer every season, was the first team all-star for three consecutive years, and was also named the uh, the BNL Player of the British National League, I would imagine. Player of the Year for the 1997-98 campaign. So, well done. Next up, we have an all-star card. We have Hilton Rugels. Hilton Ruggles. Rugels. Rugels. One or the other, folks, for the Manchester Storm. We're getting a lot of Storm cards here in this uh, in these packs, aren't we? He came to Britain in 1990, uh, 1988, I should say, with the Whitley Warriors. Playing four seasons there. Bar six games with the Murrayfield Racers and ten with the Solihull Barons. So, most of the time with the Whitley Warriors. Um, three seasons with Cardiff Devils proved to be very successful as they won two championships, two playoff championships, and an Autumn Cup. So a pretty good stint there, I must say. Um, he moved to the Manchester Storm for their inaugural season in 1995, pretty much the season that I was born. Well, no, the year before I was born. So just goes to show how long these uh, these teams have been around, folks. Stayed three seasons in total as they moved into the Super League, etc., etc. He was inducted into the British Hockey Hall of Fame in 2008 for his services to the game. And that's why he's an all-star, folks. Next up, we have Jamie Organ. I do not recognize that logo, but it looks really nice. And his mask looks legit. I really do like that mask, I've got to be honest. Oh, for the Slough Jets. There you go. So he had a 4.53 goals against average and 8.72 save percentage in 85 games. He uh, played two further campaigns in Guildford before retiring. But he spent five seasons in the UK, predominantly with the Slough Jets. And uh, he joined the British National League Guildford Flames for a few seasons. And he helped win some, uh, win some trophies, so why not? There you go. 
to Jamie Organ. I, I, I hope I'm, I know I'm not giving some of these guys the most time that they need, but, you know, I've got two more packs to open. We're already 10 minutes in, so, you know. Uh, so, Jeff Sargent. Sargent? 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 I don't know. Let's go. Uh, he was with, obviously, the Scottish Eagles again. Come on, I've got to get a Tony Tony Hand card here at some point. Canadian netminder Sargent. Iced one season in the UK for the Scottish Eagles, playing 37 games in all competitions. 2.63 goals against average, 0.917 save percentage. One of the better ones we've seen out of these netminders, for sure. He played, oh, he played eight games in the NHL, four for the St. Louis Blues and four for the San Jose Sharks. I mean, I was going to say with Jamie Organ's one, it would make sense with the uh, with the uh, helmet he's got going on there on the mask, but clearly not. Maybe it's a different guy. After leaving Scotland, he joined the DEL, and then he retired from the game the year after, so fair enough. And then last but certainly not least, a guy that a lot of ho British hockey fans will recognise, Todd Kelman. Yes, indeed. The man himself. 70 points in 180 games, 144 penalty minutes for the Bracknell Bees. Canadian defenceman Kelman spent 11 seasons as a player in the UK. He joined the Bracknell Bees in 1997, spent three seasons there, and won a championship. More silverware followed after joining the Belfast Giants, winning some more uh, championships. But now, of course, he is with the Cardiff Devils, and he's helped them win a bunch of trophies. So, pretty decent card. Todd Kelman, I didn't realise he had had such a long and successful career in the UK. It just goes to show you folks, you can learn something new about hockey every day, and that's what I like to do. So ultimate pack of this opening i know this isn't like the most exciting video that i usually upload but the guys very kindly sent me the cards over so you know i've, I've got to do my due diligence and uh and uh give, give them the love and respect they deserve you know so here we go randall weber of the nottingham panthers another panthers player another vintage logo uh, 836 points in 843 games, 516 penalty minutes. He played his entire career for the Nottingham Panthers over 17 seasons. He holds the all-time appearance record for the club, so most games played, having iced 845 games for Nottingham. I would imagine there's a couple of extra games there because obviously on the card it says 843, or there's a typo, I don't know. A defensive forward throughout his career, even though he put up a point per game, that's pretty impressive. Weber excelled, oh, they needed to capitalise the W on Weber, but okay then. Uh, excelled on the penalty kill and was regarded as one of the best shorthanded players in the country. Uh, his number 10 shirt was retired after he retired in 2002 by the Nottingham Panthers. So what better way to finish your career? Uh, then we have a checklist card. Uh, I'm not sure if that adds to the actual list. I hope it's not, wait, so there's one, two, three, four, five. So the checklist card is actually counted as one of the cards of the, of the group, which I'm not too much of a fan of i've got to be honest um so you've got checklist two over here uh you got some tony hand cards i want tony hand guys i made a video on him and everything so uh there you go there's the checklist card next we have jamie black here we go uh, uh jamie black here uh, that logo looks solid i've never seen that logo before but i absolutely love it for the newcastle river kings that is beautiful uh, 30 points in 54 games for the River Kings. Canadian forward. Played three seasons in the UK. Then uh, he left... Uh, sorry, he left the Austrian League and spent two seasons with the Bison. He moved to the Newcastle River Kings for a season. And then he went back to North America and won a, uh, won a uh, Taylor Cup with them in 2001. So, fair enough. Next, we have the man, the myth, and the legend himself, David Clark, the hero. Oh, I love him. Best player ever for the Nottingham Panthers. Well, he's not. Is he the best player ever for the Nottingham Panthers? I'll let you guys decide. Now, this was his time with the Newcastle Jesters. So that's pretty interesting. Seven points in 48 games. He's most lonely, He's most uh, mostly known for his incredibly successful 14 seasons at the Nottingham Panthers. However, earlier in his career, um, after icing for the Peterborough Pirates, he joined the Newcastle, uh, the Newcastle Jesters. And um, he scored seven points in 48 games before then going to have his long and illustrious career with the Nottingham Panthers. So congratulations to him. Now, I've just noticed here, guys, a signed card. Paul A.D. Everybody that, that watches Elite Ice Hockey League, everybody that watches the free sports coverage of uh, games with uh, British teams will know Paul A.D. He's a Nottingham Panthers legend. 1,539 points in 588 games. And he's now a telecaster. He's been, I think he's done some um, front office roles as well within the UK. He became a legend in Nottingham where he spent 11 seasons. Uh, he was a head coach, I think, for the Nottingham Panthers at one point as well. Winning a playoff championship, um, four Autumn Cups. He became the club's all-time highest point scorer, a, a record which still stands today, even though his uh, jersey was retired in 2003. So 17 years since he retired and it still stands today. I don't think anybody's going to get very close to that, especially considering he scored at roughly three points a game. 
But that's just me, you know. Uh, after a spell in Italy with Milan, AD joined the Sheffield Steelers where he helped them win the Grand Slam. And then obviously he retired in 2003. So nice that I got the signed card by Paul AD. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And then finally, another guy that was with the uh, Nottingham Panthers recently, Rick Strachan. But it's a Kings card. It's the Milton Keynes Kings. Defenseman Strachan came to the UK straight from the University of Manitoba after previously playing a season in the Finnish Liga. Ooh, how prestigious. Uh, he played with distinction for several UK clubs and the Great Britain national team. He captained Milton Keynes and Basingstoke as well as being voted onto the BNL first all-star team in 1998-1999. And uh, he now has remained in the British game, coaching both the Holsting Stingrays and the Nottingham Panthers. So I'm going to put the Paul AD signed card at the top because that's a very nice card. Right, last but certainly not least, folks. Oh my God, we've been going for like like 12 15 minutes already so last pack folks let's see who we get we start off with brett stewart we've already had a stewart but this wasn't this one so we should be all right uh so newcastle cobras 62 points in 58 games 76 penalty minutes canadian forward stewart played one season in the uk for the newcastle cobras um, finishing as their top point scorer and he did quite well. Uh, prior to arriving in Newcastle, he had spells in Italy, Germany, Norway, and Austria. So kind of some of the minor leagues, but still respectable leagues nonetheless. After leaving the Cobras, he returned to Germany and had further spells in Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. Interesting. Stuart is now the director of European scouting for NHL side Arizona Coyotes. So we've got a, uh, a guy still working in the NHL on this list. So very nice indeed. I'm just going to move the AD card down here because I want to make sure it stays there because it's nice and signed. I like it. Next up, we have Brent Pope of the Nottingham Panthers, their vintage logo again. 26 points in 111 games, so not the highest point scorer, but he's a defenseman, so cut him some slack, folks. Had a lengthy career in Britain, playing for 11 different clubs. 11 different clubs over 16 seasons. Wow. Talk about journeyman, folks. A tough, no-nonsense player. He was regarded as a reliable blue liner. His most successful spell was with the Cardiff Devils, where he won a championship and a playoff championship, and he qualified for a British citizenship and played in two of the world championships in 2003 and 2004. So, Brent Pope. You're a member of us now, folks. Lucky you. <laughs> Next, we have Scott Adair. Adair? A a Adair? I think it's Adair. I would imagine it's Adair based on how it's spelt for the Guildford Flames. 29 points in 49 games. Rugged Canadian defenseman Adair played one season in the UK with the Guildford Flames, winning a British National League Championship, a playoff double, and scoring 14 goals and 17 assists, as well as amassing 231 penalty minutes in 45 games, folks. Uh, prior to his arrival in Surrey, he iced for four seasons for the University of Alberta, and he played in the Western Hockey League, Tri-City Americans, Leth Lethbridge Hurricanes, and the Red Deer Rebels. Uh, we also have another um, checklist. So we've got checklist two and checklist three, but we don't have checklist one or four, so that kind of sucks, but no worries. Craig Nelson, the penultimate player on this list. Craig Nelson. 40 points in 53 games. Canadian defenseman Nelson spent three seasons in the UK, all with all in Scotland with the Paisley Pirates, Fly, uh, Five Flyers, and the Dundee Stars. His best season was in the 0102 season with Dundee, where he helped the team to a BNL championship and playoff double, as well as scoring 40 points in 53 games. His best career figures, which earns a Great Britain call-up. Very nice, very nice. Obviously, he must have got the dual, uh, citizenship. He's still in the game today and has been a scout for the Ontario Hockey League's Kingston Frontenac since 2014. So... Not a bad career for a guy like Craigie Nelson, eh, folks? And then last but certainly not least, we have Kevin Conway for the Basingstoke Bison. 222 points in 168 games, 108 penalty minutes. Uh, forward Conway spent 21 seasons in the UK for 10 different clubs, but is arguably best known for his seven seasons in Basingstoke, where his number 10 shirt was retired by the Bison in March 2005. He was the Bison top scorer in each of their two Super League campaigns, was their captain in 95-96 and 96-97 seasons. He also was inducted into the British Hockey Hall of Fame in 2005, folks. What a pretty impressive achievement for him. So... Looking at that, those are the cards for the Blindside Classic series. I really do like the Paul Aidy signed card there. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that we didn't get any uh, doubles as far as I'm aware. That's pretty good. 160 cards to collect. So they've really done their research. They've really made sure that they've got players from all areas of the UK and all different teams, both still running today and now defunct. So... I might have to pick up some more of these and, and maybe ask if they can send some more or pick up some more myself because I, I love hockey history and getting a bit of the British hockey history, which most British fans don't really know about much either, would be a really nice thing to do. So yeah, that was a look at the Blindside Classic Trading Cards. I'll just put this next to it so you can see which ones they are. 160 cards to collect, six cards per pack. 
you got yourselves a bit of a journey there, folks, to try and collect them all. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. If you want to see more hockey card pack opening videos, then do let me know in the comments down below. I know this video doesn't necessarily perform as well as my other videos. This is just kind of a bonus video to tide you guys over while I'm doing the live streams this week. And they very kindly sent me over the card, so I figured why not? May as well make a video on it. But yeah, um, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Roman from London, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.